been so high in silence and you can hear your heart beat doo 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 you just like me breathe how I breathe you seen what I seen and you just like me I can hear your heart beat 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 Reaching for the skies, trying to bring down tomorrow. Allergic to being broke. Hello, welcome back. Uh, if this your first time watching this, my name is Arthur Tori Holloway, and this is my road to success. And I'm bringing along with me people that have something to bring to the table. Today I have Vonda Simmons out of Orlando, right? Yes. Out of Orlando. How you doing today? I'm doing good, and yourself? Great, great. Good, good as well. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, my name is Vonda Simmons, of course. Um, I will be 50 years old in November. I was born in Orlando. Um, I left Orlando when I was eight years old, moved up to Quincy, Florida, stayed in Quincy, Florida till I turned 17, came back down to Orlando, um, had a little few bumps and bruises along the way, no kids. Um, here I am, I'm divorced right now and I mean I have an AA degree I work full time I write I do poetry um, I just actually opened up my own business called beautifully done um, okay. and I'll get to that at another time I guess but here I am <laughs> so so you are author so how many books have you ever written well um, silly women led captive is my first book right. um, this is it right here um, this is my okay. first book, Silly Women. It is for sale on Amazon, and okay. or you can order copies through me as well, okay. and I can send the book. It's only eight ninety five for the book. However, okay. um, I'm working on my next book. That is on my first book that I've written. Um, I don't really have a title to it yet because I don't know how to put it in words. Right, right, um, right. I don't know exactly what title I should use as far as my audience is concerned. Right, so I'm right, right. That now as well. So where you get your ideas from? Like, what made you write the first book? <laughs> my first book came came from life experiences. Mm -hmm. um, there is another volume coming from Silly Women Led Captive. Oh wow! Okay. Um, Silly Women Led Captive is about being molested at the age of eight years old and we hear about we hear about women and men of course which are now men young boys get molested at a young age oh, but wow. no one talks about the spiritual side of it as far as how it affects you on a spiritual level how it affects you how it affects your psyche as far as and I don't want to creep anybody out, but on a demonic level. <laughs> um, right. In other words, it's almost like when you get intertwined with someone sexually. Right, right, um, right. You take on who that person is. They went and did it, so mash out and get a glass. Them finally got a home trip, call it the pass. Introducing a special route made for a chosen few. I'm thugged out while Snoop Dogg sipping blue. Berry, but don't be scary, cause it's natural. Catch it while it's hot, get every drop, cause we running now. Plus, the party needed flavor, no need to ask. Forever mashing, people ain't ready for the stuff. I'm mashing. Take on the full responsibility of who that person is, what they have to offer. Whatever they offer you, that's what you taking on with that individual. So that's pretty much my, what Silly Women Led Captive is about because for me, I was silly because it's like I kept seeing a way of escape, mm -hmm. but I liked it. I liked yeah. what happened to me. That's what it seemed like in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It seemed okay, and it right. seemed like it was pretty cool to do. So right, right. That's so pretty basic, much what it focuses on. Right, so basically, I feel like you know, I'm an author as well, as you know that, but I yeah. feel I feel every individual have a story to tell, no matter what. And yeah. a lot of people don't understand that, you know what I mean? Some want to be better than the other ones, and some want to be like, oh, you know what I mean? So right. you know, I, I love to read your, read your book. So after this, just 
let me know how I can get a few copies from you. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. like I said, from this, Absolutely. I'm here to promote you. You know what I mean? So, um, are you an independent publisher or you with an agency? I went through Amazon to publish my first book, mm -hmm. um, creator Kindle publishing, but I don't know if I'm going to do that with the second book. Um, it just seems pretty expensive to publish, to go through a publisher. Right, it seems right. pretty expensive to do that right now. I would like to call myself an independent publisher. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon does get part of the royalties if you go through them and buy it. Right. It goes through me. That's my money. For real, um, yeah. But I would like to consider myself as an independent publisher as of now. Mm -hmm. um, and if something for me in the future, hey, let's do it. Right, you know? right. <laughs> So let me ask you some. Do you view writing as a kind of spiritual practice or something? Well, this something like book that? is Silly Women Led Captive is. Mm -hmm. um, my next book, the, I'm going to say prison because I've never been to prison. Right, But right. the jailhouse mentality that I picked up along the way in my life. Um, I know you're thinking, well, God damn, what are you drinking? The cook it better. No one the beer feel better. I used to be a hustler. Now I'm a 22 blue guzzler. Other beers I'm not loving you. Forget the great taste that's less filling. I'd rather have some eyes and some dimes in the crib chilling. Or in the six relaxing. Honey's in the back. Cracking six packs, rubbing my back. Big pop you all that. My life. Um, being a two-time felon, I got against me oh, so wow. um going in a certain direction with a certain lifestyle mm -hmm. um i don't want to hold no punches right and I a lot of people that, are right. going to get offended right right i understand <laughs> that <this> <laughs> right right do so you know people, yeah go ahead, a lot go ahead. Of people are gonna get offended, so that's just where i'm at with it right now oh i see do you know like any other authors anybody or did you just start writing off your own um, this book took me 20 years to write. <laughs> wow. I got, I got the title Silly Women Led Captive back in 2001. Oh, and okay. I just held on to it. Mm. And I got, I started working with different people. Right, but right. But the book turned out to be nothing like what I thought it was going to be. I realized the book was about me. And I was right, like, exactly. whoa, this is a bit much. So I kind of had to push people to the side and I took 10 days out of those 20 years and decided to go with what I know. Right, when I right. Wrote it. So I took 10 days and just, you know, went with what I knew and kind of left it at that. But it did take 20 years. And I do know other authors. I met one by the name of Demikio. Mm -hmm. um, she actually, she has uh, several books that's out, oh, but, wow. um, Never really collaborated with her um, on a book or anything, but I do know that she is a great writer. I've read her books before. Right. And with the editing, how you went about getting your book edited? Did you do it I yourself? <laughs> so the editing was really fun because mm -hmm. I paid someone, I think it was like six fifty, seven hundred dollars to do the editing, but I had to go back and redo my editing yeah i hate that though you know it's like dang you know i, didn't <laughs> I want had to, to sound like that and redo my editing actually she sent my book to someone and it was like your book is just trash and wow. i was like that's just for the money yeah uh, the money. yeah and i went back and did my own editing and i decided to get it published and so far everybody's read it is like wow you know wow. you went through yeah. that or you know, I can relate. Most of the women and girls that I've given it to say they can relate. So. Right, right. So, like, in, in in your story, like, um, how do you select the names of your characters? Or is it real people that you, like, named them after? Yes. They're, um, my character, my main character in Silly Women Led Captive is China. China, okay. Um, yes. And China came about because, actually, China was the name of my cat. I love oh, cats. Okay, I got one myself somewhere around <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> so yeah. China, that's how that character came about. But I used that character 
Um, that's actually, that character, the name of China, has actually brought along volume two of this book. It's going to be used in volume two and dealing with the church and okay. the, what's going on in the body of Christ. Um, so right. that could all be used and this whole book can be shifted around to the body of Christ. Right, um, right. But China was my main character when I named like my friends in the book, what I would consider to be my friends. I had like a character named Mr. Molest, which stood for molestation. Right, wow. I had um, a character named Pornography, Ooh. but her name or his name was Pornia, which is the Greek <laughs> name for that actual word. Right, right. So, I <laughs> so I yes, I did use characters in this book. Wow, okay, okay. Um, Do you read your own book reviews? Like how people like read your book and send you, like be sending you emails and you know, like critics. You no, know, I've had I've had like personal responses more on people buying it from Amazon. Amazon was not a big hit for me. My right. great success came from this book from me handing it to someone and you know them coming to me or me shipping it to them and them telling me, "Hey, that book was awesome." Right. And I'm right. like, "Hey, can you Amazon and do a review?" But I never, I've only seen a couple of reviews on Amazon concerning the book, so. Right, I understand no. that. So, um, like in your story, right? Do you mm -hmm. hide like any secrets in your books like that only a few people could find? No. Not at the all. The book is pretty open, it's pretty raw. Um, as what I did, what I, what I went through, it, right. it wasn't, I didn't even sugarcoat it. Um, like, for example, one time I explained in the book how I was sleeping with a guy. I was having sex with this guy. And I'm like, I could see the shadow right above us as we we're having sex. Wow. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So, <laughs> a lot of people are like, now that's, that's kind of creepy. But yeah, these yeah. are the things that take place that this is the unforeseen thing that people don't understand and don't see and like man i don't want to hear that i don't want to go through that but you are going through that if you're just out there sleeping around with anybody with anybody so, yeah exactly yeah yeah all right okay do you like do you google yourself are your books like on google and stuff like that yes my name is on google um when you put in vonda simmons okay. it will come up my book will come up um you know, that's when I first saw it, I was like, oh, you could Google me, you know, but yeah, yeah, it I know does that come excitement. up, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, I, when I get to um, do a book that's a bestseller, I think that's my goal. Um, a yeah. book on this next book to help someone understand what it's like for a person who can make mistakes in life as far as the system, the justice system goes. And how they deserve a second chance, you know. Okay, okay. So, After this show here, I'm gonna give you a couple of links that you probably want to look into that can probably help you too, like dealing with your own um, book sales too. And then you know okay. what I mean. I got a couple, and they all free. You don't have to pay <laughs> anything. So, like when you was young, like what was your favorite childhood book? If you had one. Um, it's crazy because I didn't even have a favorite childhood book. I read magazines. I was. I think I, when I was younger, because I went through so much, I was more stuck in fantasy land. Right, right. Um, I didn't even really do a lot of reading as I was young, even though I was a great reader. Um, I, I won several spelling bees and everything like that. But I was not, I was not a book reader per se. I just looked at, my thing was always looking at Ebony Magazine. I wanted to be this Ebony Magazine model. Right, you know? right. I understand that. I understand so, that. So, um, I would not really say that coming up, I was a great, as far as a book reader is concerned, I didn't read many books. Right, okay, no. okay. Do you, like, have a lot of supporters, like, supporting you with your book, like, family and friends, like, close friends around you? I have my mother and my son and my father mm -hmm. um, and my two niece, my nieces, they support me. Um, as far as a lot of friends are concerned, my pastors, um, they, I get a lot of support from them as well. But okay. as far as like a, a whole crowd of people, no, I don't have a lot of, I found out when I wrote the book, mm -hmm. who my supporters were. Let's just put it that way. Right. You yeah. Know, gotta bring them know. all in the front of you. <laughs> For real, yeah. Yes, I found out who my supporters were when, you know, I wrote the book. I was like, wow. 
this person supported me when I thought this person would not would have. So right, yeah. right, yeah, I know, yeah, it happened <laughs> like that, yeah. Well, let me yeah. ask you something. Um, if you had to do something different as a child or a teenager to become a better writer as an adult now, what would you would have done? Like I would have focused more on my. I wouldn't say my, I would say my grammar as far as like mm -hmm. words to use, being more creative with words, word knowledge. Um, focus more on that as a, a kid in school, like coming up in school, it was pretty hard for me um, as a child. So I think I probably would have, if I could go back and do something different as relating to my edge, it would be my education. I would probably would have focused more on reading a lot of books right 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 on educating myself on knowledge and you know on how to write books and where i am now so mm -hmm. yeah so you said it took you 21 <laughs> years to write your first book yes because i was given this okay so i was given this title 2000 2001 right mm -hmm. i was given the title and when i really became focused i went home i got excited when right. I got the title, I was like, how did that come to my mind? And I wrote it down. And I went home and I tried to do write about it and I threw it to the side. And I would always meet people that write or wrote, but the I would never give them the title to the book. I, do, I right. don't know why. Something would not allow me to just release the title, but would always try to get insight on how to write, what to write, where it goes what when you're writing. And I could not get anybody to really come with together with me concerning that. I didn't know where to go. I, I just didn't have any knowledge like I have now on right. certain things. So I threw it to the side. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I would say 2015 when I was going to school for nursing that I decided Okay, I gotta, I gotta do something with this. This, this title here it is. This many years later, I gotta do something with this title. It's still in my head. I can't right. forget it. And right, I I, like I said, I took it came to me what I thought about in twenty years. I took that and decided in ten days to shut myself in the room and just write. And I began to flow with the writing. So I was like, wow. And when I did it, I sat on it for another year, actually. Okay. You know, and that's when I found the editor, you know, someone who told me they do editing and things of that nature. And that's when I spoke with them about editing and going forth. Yeah. Okay. So how long you think it'll take you to do the second book? The oh. sequel to it? <laughs> <laughs> it definitely will not be that long. Um, I'm actually looking to have my second book out by the spring, by March or April of this year coming mm -hmm. um however like i said i just opened my business called beautifully done um right so even though i'm dealing with the book i have a lot of stuff behind me that i'm behind the scenes that i'm doing as well for yeah, my business kind of the right, books right. are just like a major it's a major part of me who i am as a person and what i had to go through to help somebody else but i would say around april March or April of next year for sure. Right, I just right. don't have a title. <laughs> right, 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 right. So have, have the corona like this the epidemic now, have the um this staying at home ever gave you like any more ideas to do anything else like in the writing field or Well I have my poor I have poetry even in this book, Silly Women Led Captive. I have mm. poetry in the book. Mm. Um I have one a set a piece of poetry in the book. But um record that portrait in the studio actually oh, and i was wow. gonna do a video for it um the video didn't quite work out the way i mm. i thought it was gonna go nothing pretty worked out because when coronavirus hit air pretty much shut down right, so i right, never got right. a chance to do the video for that mm -hmm. but the what i wrote in there it deserves some type of filming as far as for the portrait is concerned so, right um, okay. yes Okay, so um, now on some personal questions, you know what I mean? Like, okay. could you tell us, like, what are your weaknesses? Like, I could tell you what was my weakness. Mm -hmm. um, 
men were my weakness at one point. Right. Um, and that was because I had a low self low self esteem. Right. Um, right. And what I is I was getting preyed on. So I would say men was my weakness at one point. But as time has gone by, I learned that if you don't love yourself, don't love, it doesn't matter. If you don't exactly. love yourself, nothing else matters. You know. Very true. Um, Very true. <laughs> I don't care who you dating. If you don't love yourself or who you married to, it, it ain't gonna work. Cause you right, gotta love yeah. yourself. You, you know, you you. and because of what I walked through, I did not love myself. And I had to realize that the hard way. I had to learn that the hard way. I had to get knocked down. So now that I learned how to love myself, I could say that was my weakness. As far as right now my weakness is concerned, I honestly can't really say I have a weakness. Cause I'm so focused. I'm building my goals and my dreams. The only thing that can distract me, honestly, probably is if you mess with my cat. (laughs) (laughs) I understand that though. So, um, where do you, (laughs) so where do you see yourself like in five years after achieving your goals? Definitely, um, I've thought about helping women on the streets and I'm not talking about women that are just out there. Um, I would say in prostitution, I'm talking about young girls who are just angry with the wrong path. Um, I do, I just want to be able to tell people, I would say it's some men out there that think just like women, they're just a man. They just think, they don't think they're beautiful. They don't know that on the, the very essence of you explains everything you are. So in five years, I pray that I have not just, I'm not just thinking about it, but mm-hmm. I've pulled in so many people, especially young girls, young girls off the streets, runaways, teenagers, prostitutes, um, crackheads, whatever you want to call them, drug addicts, at least helping women to show them just how beautifully beautiful they can be and how beautiful they are. As far as a man is concerned, I have a problem that I think in this season, I would rather not talk with a man about his, his, his beauty as far as, I mean, men are beautiful. We say men are handsome. When I say beautiful, I mean the very essence, the very core of who you are. I would rather not go and talk with a man about that. I think I will leave that to another man to do at this point. But if I even ran into a man and he's struggling with his self-esteem because they struggle too, um, I think it's about helping a person find out who they really are. That's my goal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, like... I'm a single, well, I was a single parent, as you know, I'm, I'm married now, but I was a single yes, parent for like, congratulations. thank you, thank you, for like 15 years, you know, and I felt kind of opposite of what you're saying. I didn't feel like, you know, I couldn't have nobody or whatever. I feel like that I had to be single, didn't have any and every woman coming in my house around my son and let him pick up off of that, you know what I mean? So basically, <laughs> I kind of like stayed back to raise him until, you know, who he is today. So, yeah, I understand, you know. I, we all got to put God first, though. We all yeah. have to. You know what I mean? Yeah. If we don't put God first, then we left behind anyways. And one thing I say exactly. about God, exactly, one thing I say about the Lord is like, how you feel like you a mistake when God don't make no mistakes? You know what I mean? So right. you got to look in within yourself on who you are and find the greatness out of that. You know what I mean? For real. So, um, but you know, that's, that's so true. And it's so awesome that you said that. Learned, what I'm learning about a lot of men and women on the street, um, even something that I just got through dealing with, men, if, if a man, and this is what's so, what I'm finding out, uh, me as a female, felt, I felt rejected by my father. Even though my father was there, my father has never rejected me, but for some reason, I felt that he was not there enough. That's how I felt. When a woman or a little girl feels that rejection, she gonna go find it. She gonna oh, go yeah. Regardless, somewhere right. to go find it. Um, she gonna go somewhere and try to fill that void. And she gonna keep going through people till she feel like she's found that void. Until she finds God, that void, void is just gonna keep staying empty. And she gonna keep going. A man, I, I, what I've learned, and this has been for the past four years I've experienced this. I've run into men 
who don't have much for their mother and they treat women like they're nothing. And I've found, and they don't understand that the rejection that they're feeling from their mother is a part of the reason why they feel the way they do about themselves. Because if you got to have this woman and that woman just to make it, then there's that's something about you. That's not saying nothing about that woman. You have to answer yourself as well. So you have to deal with your inner being and to find yourself. And the very essence of who you are as a man says, you know, you're going through any woman you can all because you have not healed from the rejection of your own mother. And a lot of people do not face that, but it's the truth. Yeah, it is. It is very true on that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's deep, though. All right. Um. So have you ever, like, achieved anything from as, like, in your past dealing with what you do? Have you ever achieved, like, like have people ever really, like, followed what you were saying and went and started going the right way? Yes. Um. I've met a couple of people on my job. Uh-huh. Actually, I've been dealing with a couple of young girls who one was actually in a very abusive relationship on my job. And she was like, what do I do? What do I do? And it was just as simple. I was like, honestly, you know the answer. You don't want to do it because you like it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I just had to raw with her. Um, a couple of people, they just told me that they could relate to what they see, you know, what they read. They said that they could relate to it. Um, if a major change took place, they didn't come and tell me that that changed place, you oh, know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow. Well, <laughs> I want to check. I want to check your book out, though. You know what I mean. I really want to <laughs> read that because just by having this conversation with you, I, I can imagine how real the book can really be. You know what I mean. So do you? But do you see yourself as making this book a bestseller or? Yes, because another volume has to come from this book because Mm. even though the title of this book is called Silly Women Led Captive, that's the name of the book, Mm. but this book also comes in another volume um, and that volume is dealing with the body of Christ, um, which is represented as a woman and the body of Christ is gone. They led captive too. You know, there are things going on in the body of Christ now and God is already doing a shaking and he's showing that in the earth realm as we speak. You know, he's shaking some people up and out, like, have a seat or I'm going to sit you down because I've already told you to sit down. So he's, we're at a place now where, and this is the word I use, God is sweeping the city. All right. I know he's sweeping the city here in Orlando, but he's sweeping the United States. And silly women led captive is also dealing with a form of rejection because the book is really about the foundation of rejection. Um, the body of Christ rejects other members in the church. The The body of Christ, like my pastor said one time, we were talking about the shootings that were going on with the police brutality. And her statement was, and I quote, the, the church is segregated. She said, God told her the church is segregated. It is because it is. they, 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 they choose and pick who they want to be in leadership. They choose and pick who they want to be on the choir. Who's going to be on the dance team? This pastor has their favorites. This person has their favorites. You got all these church, and a lot of people have experienced a lot of church hurt, and they say, "Oh, there's no thing to church hurt." Yes, it is. There's a thing, but there's honestly, to me, that's the worst hurt. Because right, once yeah. you get this, once that you you're going to a place where you're thinking these people are supposed to be able to love and all this. In other words, it might even build a fantasy in your head of what the image God gave you on how the church is supposed to be. Exactly. And some people they worship the for the people instead of worshiping God. And so that's in that hurt, Yeah. Yes. So when that hurt comes in. You, they will either they'll be they will be tested on whether or not they were standing on the foundation of God, or if they were standing on the foundation of the pastor. Uh, ever, if that person is weak, they're gonna leave the church and they're going to the streets. Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. And then yeah. Jeremiah, um, God also said, you know, many of my pastors led my flocks <laughs> in many different directions. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> not one haven't came and visit me yet. You know what I mean? And I was like, <laughs> whoa, you know what I mean? Yes. That's deep, though. That is real deep. Yes. So let me let me ask you another question though. Um like what do you consider would be your biggest failure? Like out of all the things you're doing, what would be your biggest failure? My biggest failure, the way I look at failure now versus what I've gone through in my past is to not even try and do it. It's failure. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to give you the, the reason I say that now is because I went to school for nursing from 99 to 2003. Um, in 92, I caught the felony. 1992, I caught my first felony. And then in 93, I caught another felony. Um, here it is, 99, we would think I would be forgiven and I'm trying to get my life on track. And I went through all these prerequisites, four years of going to school, only to get to apply for the nursing program. And I am told, I'm sorry, we can't accept you. You have a felony. So I went to school for four years for nothing. Mind wow. you, I spent all this money in financial aid and student loan, and here it is, I don't graduate, let's go to school for four years. So I shoot for the title again in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, A long then, time apart. Yeah, I shoot for the title again in 2011, only to get to 20, I think it's 2014, close to graduating, two semesters before graduating, and get kicked out of the program for having two C's because oh, you cannot wow. have more than three C's. And when that happened, it took me to gather my mental thoughts back together because I felt like a true failure. I felt like someone who I'm like, wow, I'm never going to be nothing. Here I am a convicted felon and I can't do nothing with my life. I'm going to be a nobody all my life. Right, and, right. you know, it's like I was tormented in the, I think it's in the book of Genesis, as they were getting ready to cross over into the promised land, mm -hmm. that place is called the place of almost. That's what it's called, that's what it's considered. Because Moses didn't make it, he almost made it. Yeah, and he, he saw it, he saw it. But yeah, he, he got a chance to see it, but he never, he almost made it. He saw it, but he didn't make it. And I was tormented with that. It's like the enemy tormented and was like, yeah, you almost had that, you almost, made it you almost could have did this you almost would have been a traveler's nurse and it's like god said not so you know and he had me to pick pick myself up and That's even it. after that as time went by he has shown me you're so much more powerful than a nursing degree you're so much more powerful than just you know making so much money the money i thought i wanted to make you know, so right now I'm just letting him lead me to where he wants me to go. Wow. So my so, failure is not to try and do what he's telling me to do now. <laughs> right, right. So if you had the opportunity to talk to like the teenage women's little girls and boys or whatever, what would you advise them to do? What would you tell them? As far as young teenage boys, depending on what subject we're on, if it's dealing with if it's dealing with guys and girls, wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. Right, right. When you're sexually active, I think we're in a time where I'm not gonna. I'm the type of person. I'm not gonna shoot. I'm not gonna say just wait and don't have sex. I'm gonna be like, close your legs. Don't do it. I will tell a young girl that quick. It's not worth it. Um, it's not worth the headache. It's not worth the experience. It's not a work of pain and that you're going to experience just from one action. One action is going to lead to multiple actions. If it's dealing with a little boy, I would tell him to wait too, because that people underestimate, they always say little girls, but little boys too, wait. The right woman comes along, wait until you're ready, you know, and don't let peer pressure take you out. Don't, you know, it's a beautiful thing to wait. It's a very beautiful thing to wait. I say wait. Right, right, exactly, right. Well, that was all my questions. You know what I mean? And oh, okay. um, this was one of the best interviews that I done had so far. You know what I mean? Awesome. Because what okay. I see, what I see, what I see within you is is 
a spirit of God. And, and I'm going to tell you the reason why I say that, though, because you have certain interviews I can show you. People will tell you straight up this, that, 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 that. And it's like you're everywhere with it. But you stay right on track. That's how God will want you to be. And you know what I mean? You didn't, you didn't bend, shake. You were just straight firm. You know what I mean? And <laughs> you caught my attention. So okay. I know, you know, just, just to, to hear your voice and what you're saying that you're straight from the yeah. heart. You know what I mean, and and like I said, I'm gonna I want I'm gonna check your book out. I'm no gonna send you some copies. You're gonna just inbox me your address, and okay, this weekend I will. I will definitely um get those in the mail to you. Right, right. Well, yeah. um, I know I know usually authors be solo, you know, solo writers, solo stories, solo books. Have you ever thought about like like doing a duo, like writing with another author on the story? <laughs> This has come back again. I was um, actually at that. I was supposed to be on Duo, and I turned it down out of fear. I got to be honest. Um, with my pastor, who's doing a compilation book, and out of fear because I felt she's so she's so educated, and and I was like, mm, I'm, I'm not going on no book with her. <laughs> right, right. You weren't feeling it. Yeah, I got you. I got right, you. Right. She's very direct and you better have your stuff together. And I felt like I was not there. I was like, mm -mm, we ain't doing this. So, <laughs> right, right. But, um, you're the second person that's talking about that. And I am, I know I'm ready for that because it's, it's come back to me again. So, okay, okay. If he says I'm ready, I, then I am ready. Yes. Right, and then it motivates you too because you know you're doing it with somebody. So it's like every little chance you get, you try to soak up ideas and stuff to get the story right. Yes. Yeah. And two brains are always better. Oh, Three yeah. Four Most brains definitely. are always better, yes. Most definitely, yeah. We all need trainers in every field, you know what I mean? Yes, I'm willing <laughs> to be educated on some things. Um, my prayer has been for send me the, the tribe you want me to go forth and business with. Because, okay. you know, ain't no one-man show. Every it's, it's billions of people on the planet. Everybody mm -hmm. can, you know, make money or prosper however we're supposed to prosper. It's, it's big enough for everybody. Right, right. You know, while we're still on the air, I'm going to tell you how I, how I ran across you. I had, in the beginning of this year, I dropped mm -hmm. a story called My Circle. I don't know if you was following that on, on, on my page or whatever, but My Circle, Apocalypse in the Hood. It, like, I finished it the end of 2019, and I got it published, and it went in the stores in January. Okay. So, by the name Apocalypse in the Hood, it's like, you know, it was like a profit thing because the coronavirus came right yeah. after. It's like I knew it. You know what I mean? Yeah, people, yeah. <laughs> my readers was telling me, they're like, man, you know, are you a prophet? And I'm like, why are you saying that? Because the book was showing about the world, you know what I mean? And then this, right. corona, this pandemic came and it was like, I predicted it. You know what I mean? So, of right. course, I prayed about it. I'm like, Lord, you know. But yeah, you know, you know what I mean? It was like amazing. Well, anyway, so when that book came out, my mom, she said, do you know you have a cousin that write to? <laughs> and I was like, really? She was like, yeah, you know, and like I say, like, like right now, this is my road to success. So I'm like, you know, what is she doing? You know, how many books she got? So she gave me your page and all that. That's when I sent you that invite. Earlier right. this year, you know what I mean? And right. I start looking at you, you know, at your story and stuff like that. But I was just dying to talk to you. I couldn't wait to talk to you, but I had to have the right reason to be able to get you to, you know what I mean, conversate with me, you know what I mean? But, you know, like, it's, 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 on, it's on God. God doesn't make no mistakes, you know what I mean? No, and he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I'm juggling with a lot of stuff right now. You know, I don't know if you ever heard of Lena Leith. She's the um the female at, um producer low hacker. She just did this movie. I can't think of it. Um at the um Lena Late. She's like she's familiar. Yeah, she you know what I mean. She like she like girls, of course, or whatever, but she's a good cool person. Up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so she um finna start this TV series called Boomerang. You know what okay. I mean? And she's looking for six um screenwriters. So I did the application with her. I got a connect with her and everything. You know what I mean? So I'm you. waiting on that, though. You know what I mean? I got a couple of people. It's like, you ever heard of J. Cole, the rapper? Yes. That's I one know of my his, favorite. Okay, I know his manager. I know his manager, like, straight up. You know what I mean? So I got a lot of interviews coming up with, like, artists and stuff for him, too. 
Have you ever heard of yeah? Have you ever heard of Wadia Clark? Kiki Swenson. Yeah, Wadia Clark, Kiki Swenson, Wifey, Wifey After Next, the book series. I think I have heard of yeah. Yeah, you know these like well known like you know writers. I know her personally, so you know it's a lot of stuff juggling. You know what I mean? And all like with your book, do you want to just keep it like just as a story, or would you you want mind like putting it into films? I would you know? love to put it in films. Um, I w- I wanted to, I wanted to take off, and I know I can't do it by myself. Right? Yeah, we all need help. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? But, but we start from the bottom. It, I would love to put it in films. Okay. Yes. Okay. But everybody going to be watching this video, so I'm just letting you know that right now. So if you have any questions or you have anything that you want to let them know, here's your time right now. Okay. Well, first, I would just like to say thank you for this um, time. Thank you for this interview. So glad to finally meet a cousin, another family member right. who's into the book, the screenwriting. That's so awesome. Um, also, whoever reads this book, I, I'm willing to be checked. I'm willing to be molded on things I need to change, critique, um, because this is my first book. Um, so I'm willing to be educated on things I need to do, things I don't need to do, um, concerning whatever. Um, the poetry in this book, um, I cannot wait. Um, if you get some time on the next show, I'll go for it on the poetry. Um, or if you get some time to talk to me again, then I'll read the poetry to you. Um, okay. Because the poetry within itself is like a movie. <laughs> You know, it's, wow, okay. it's, a, it's a short film. It's, to me, short film, like five minutes, maybe two minutes um, type short film. I don't know, but um, I would say I'm willing, like I say, educate me, critique me, um, bring me on, whatever needs to be done. I'm willing to learn and glean from this so that I can understand because this will also help me with my next book as well. And right. if somebody wants to come on and, you know, do like a compilation or you say, you know, like with the different writers in one book, I'm all for that as well. Okay. I'm very could excited. You, could you show your book again so I, so we can see it again? Yes. Book? So this is called Silly Women. Uh, let me see. Can you see it? There you go. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Silly okay. Women captive. Okay. Yeah. Silly Women Led Captive. Um, and this is by me, Vonda Simmons. I am the author of the book. Um, that's it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for um, giving me this opportunity, you know what I mean, to be able to help you help me, you know what I mean? So We helped each other. Cause you I appreciate it. Me. Right. I you appreciate it. But... This is a motivational tool for me to keep focusing oh, yeah, on what, what, what I need to do and to keep rocking out just to most keep definitely. going forward. Yes. I can hear your heartbeat. You just like me. I can hear your heartbeat. I can hear your heartbeat. I can hear your heartbeat. You just like me. I can hear your heartbeat.